The contour wand. If I see one more Tilbury. wand, I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh god, okay. Kevin's gonna slide off his seat. <sighs> I'm mad Beyonce's Renaissance tour wasn't catered to white twinks who only got into Beyonce seven years ago. Say it louder for the, the title. people in the back. Death, Death to, to all, all of them. them. And you did it at my birthday dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your water? You're listening to Rebecca and the Douche. <laughs> I miss old school radio like that. Yeah. Ooh, a little fuzzy on my mic. Ooh, what was it? Oh, from the pillow. Oh, is that a white pube? Are you getting Yeah, oh. oh my God. I'm aging so quick. Benjamin Button. Wasn't that backwards? He was a, yeah, he was like he an, was old, born an old he man. He was an old man baby. I never watched that. Hi, guys. Welcome back to a new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. I'm Johnny Ross. I'm Kevin Banzaff. And let's address the elephant in the room. We're getting a <gasps> oh, new God. neon. Oh, God. Just because I'm wearing gray? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the big elephant in the room. We are getting a new neon sign. And if I needed to read one more comment about it after the set reveal, I was going to lose my mind. So it takes a while to order a neon sign. And I didn't want just a blank Imagine if it was just a square thing of grass. What about my name? I know. God, you're not even really here. Are you even here? If your name's not on the back, this is an old sign that we hung. Could you imagine if there's like a matrix where you think you've been doing this with me the whole time and it's been a dream you're a figment and I'm of my imagination. I almost took a piece of computer paper and just wrote N. And Kevin, Kevin on the bottom. Can you, That's what I want. I'm telling you, like we are going to order a new Thumb sign, guys. to the wall, yeah. just mm-hmm. and Kevin. And that's yes. actually kind of cute. But we are ordering a new sign, so don't worry. Kevin is going to be represented very soon. Uh, yeah, so in today's episode, what are we talking about? We have we a are, lot of pop culture topics. We have a lot going on, girl. Um, We're talking about Beyonce criticism, tour criticism, which is insane. We'll get into that. Yep. And we are also talking about the Jonah Hill debacle and like how crazy he is. What is going on with celebrities? Right I now? don't even know. And of course, a purchase or pass. Of course. What have you been up to? <laughs> Well, you know, just hooking, 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 sucking, <gasps> sucking, ticking cock. Uh, she will never live that down. She will never live that down. No. I also don't think we're talking about Tati Westbrook. I also don't think we give enough um, just attention to the end of her comeback video, which was her going on a rant about how she's people who make divination videos about her. We need to she's closing the door on the spiritual route. Like we just kind of like glossed over we that. We did gloss over that. Like. And if you don't know what we're talking about, it's still available to watch, right? It's like her, it was her first video back after like forever. But she even has the old ones up, right? Or oh, did I she think take so. them down? She might have taken well, down. Well, I'm like, sure somebody has the like a recording. Video. Yeah, a recording. Oh, God of almighty. It. It's probably all over YouTube. Well, so if you haven't watched those videos, what a time in the what beauty a time. industry. That was so insane. Ick. The crying from the oh, response video. Oh, my God. All of it. Right at my birthday dinner, right in front of my salad. Oh, right in front of my salad. <laughs> that was the Bye Sisters video. Video, the I sucking dick and cock. I yeah. Can't. Sucking dick and cock. And you did it at my birthday dinner. Yeah. <laughs> like, just so <laughs> Pollyanna, the juxtaposition of the the delivery versus the words was iconic. I wish I could have been at the birthday dinner just <gasps> seeing what the behavior was like. Imagine her reaction in person. But I bet you she was silent in the moment. Yes. Because she said, oh, oh I just brushed course. it off and got over it. Remember, remember? Yes. Like, if you had a problem with it and that's your friend, you say something in the moment and be like, yeah, you should girl, tone it dial down. it down. Yeah. yeah. Be like, you're talking about sucking dick and cock. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then the video back when oh. she like took a year or two off or whatever, her first video back at the end of it, the last, what was it? Two minutes. She just throws in this comment about anybody making videos about me, like something about divination. I've closed the door in the spiritual realm. I was just like, what the is, fuck yeah. is going on, girl? She ghouls and goblins over there in that household. Iconic. Truly. All right. Well, uh, let's dive into yeah. Hot Topics. Yes. All right. We'll be right back. I went to the Beyonce concert in Philly. Okay, Kevin, let me tell you this. Please I, do. Let me know. I saw her for the I Am Sasha Fierce tour, and I was like... <gasps> did you really? Yes. I was gooped when I did the math, because I was like, oh, like, how long ago was this? I think it was 13 years ago. <gasps> Has she been on tour since or no? Yeah, yeah. She's okay. definitely been on tour, but that was the last time I saw you her. You saw her. Yeah. yeah and okay. uh, especially I love Renaissance so much, and I just, I don't know, I, I was busy the last 13 years, I guess. But yeah, 13 years since I've seen her last, and let me tell you... It was amazing. 
amazing when I saw her the first time. Like, it was obviously incredible. But imagine how many bodies of work she's come out with in the past 13 years. Like, just, you know, where she yes. is now. This is going to sound so gay, so hyperbolic. I left the stadium and my lips were chapped because I didn't even realize how I was just watching most of the concert. Like, with my mouth open, like jaw on the floor. There really is something about her that is, and Casey is, had never seen her before. So like watching him see her, just the vocal ability, the vocal talent, how stunning she is, the hair, the costumes. There is something like otherworldly. Like it, it really felt like, oh, this is not a human being. This is something from above that has come to earth to do this because I can't even articulate like even seeing Gaga so many times and et cetera, other people who dance and sing, whatever. Gaga even gets winded after like a big dance break or whatever. You can hear her even take a, a, a bigger breath every now and again. I'm not kidding you when I tell you Beyonce in three hours, she performed nonstop 42 songs. Not once do you hear her go <gasps> take a breath, a breath. The shape this woman, like otherworldly to wow. watch someone do something that I'm like, oh, you are the best at this. And, and that the whole controversy that ended up happening was there was this like white gay on TikTok that basically was at the same show I was, was at Philly and posted his critiques, shall we say, of the Beyonce concert. And it was just so incredibly tone deaf. Let me say as another white gay, let me try to just kind of a tone and let everybody out there know we're not all like this. So some of the critiques he was saying was the first four songs she started with was uh, One Plus One, Dangerously in Love, I Care, Flaws and All. And he says on his TikTok, he's like, why would you start with those songs? Like, who cares? And the point of this is not to like drag him. The point is this is such a little microcosm of sharing your critique doesn't just mean you can vomit out whatever you want to without considering the construction of your critique and whether it's tone deaf or not. Of course. And also too, it's that sense of entitlement. I bought the ticket so I can critique this. Mm -hmm. This is not an art gallery where yeah. it's a painting and it's your interpretation. That's the thing. You're allowed to have whatever opinion you, you can have, Sure, but there's a difference between an educated opinion, which is teaching yourself that maybe these songs mean something not just to you, a white gay man, maybe they mean something to someone else. So when you go on social media and say, why did you start with these songs? Nobody likes these songs. Ew. They're niche. Why did you start with Dangerously in Love? It's the song, yes. it's niche. That's yeah. the name of her debut album. She stopped singing Dangerously in Love in the stadium because the entire stadium, stadium was singing the lyrics of the song to the point that she stopped and let the entire arena wow. sing the song. That's like yeah, so chilling. It, so nobody wanted it. It's niche. What are you talking about? Beyonce was my first love. And, and maybe not even the first music I listened to, but the first person that the entire experience, what she mm. was doing, was insane to me. So when she did like flaws and all, I was I was on cloud nine because I'm like, oh my God, we're getting stuff all the way back then, opposed to it just maybe being Renaissance music. 75, if not more, percent of the audience was people of color. The rest was queer people. It was all people of color and queer people, especially Renaissance being so inspired by and paying homage to queer people of color with all of the samples and everything she was putting on display. I had a moment in the middle of it where I just like had this, where I was like, what a profound thing this woman has done and is doing for people of color and queer people, especially queer people of color who get the least amount of support across the board. And then here's this white gay guy going like, why wasn't it for me? I only wanted this. You can share your opinion, but don't cry about it when your opinion with no consideration for the magnitude of what you're discounting means to other people. And you're not saying this to your other little white gay friends who are going to agree with you. You're putting this on the Internet. So when people justifiably say, excuse me, don't cry about it. And I even think it was in the second video responding to everybody stitching his where he said, yeah, like, I know, like, I didn't get into, <laughs> I didn't get into Beyonce into Lemonade. So first so, of all, what now, makes you think on. you're qualified to even talk about this in the first place? And since then, obviously, it's been stitched by millions of people of color at this point, basically explaining why this is so tone deaf. He has learned nothing. He's made a second and a third video doubling and tripling down, calling everybody sensitive. And I wanted to be like, no queen. 
Queen, your initial video was sensitive because it should have been titled I'm Mad Beyonce's Renaissance Tour wasn't catered to white twinks who only got into Beyonce seven years ago. Say it louder that for the, the people title. in the back. That was your take. So then you're aggravated that people are offended by your take? Exactly. I was at the same concert and he was basically saying like there was no opening act. I don't want an opening act for Beyonce. This is a woman with 25 years of... Of work. Doing 42 songs, what do you need an opening act for? I w- first of all, exactly. I would have been exhausted. Second of all, he was like, oh, we sat there for an hour and a half. Well, time your shit better because first of all, in Philly, there's like a bunch of places you can go within go the stadium. Bar. We were at, exactly, we were like doing stuff and I think we sat down 10 minutes before she came on. So I don't know, manage your time better, A. B, she doesn't need an opening act. Yes. The video of this person saying to, he's like, it's not like I paid for $50 nosebleeds. Oh, I no. saw that clip and I'm like, oh, so insinuating that people that maybe paid for cheaper. First of all, there was no $50 Beyonce ticket. So you insinuating that, oh, you're like, I wasn't some poor bitch up in the nosebleeds. <laughs> Who deserves less? Who deserves less? I paid yeah. money. Yeah. Like assuming that the people that paid less are beneath you yes. and they are garbage and you deserve more because you spent more. There is a special place for you. 100%. And, like your opinion, because I don't get that. And she was waiting for the sun to set because the visuals in this concert, Kevin, I can't even explain to you. I don't know what witchcraft was in these visuals. On the screen, it literally looked like you could have gone inside of it. Like it was, and she's always been very ahead of the curve with visuals. Do you remember when she did, this was for years ago now, when she was like dancing and on the behind her, it was like the black silhouettes also dancing with her, like using the technology. Oh no. my God. She's always been on the cutting edge of like using visuals, like uh, digital visuals yeah. to enhance the thing. But these visuals, I'm not kidding you. It was the only concert I've been to that I was like excited every single time she was doing a costume change. Cause I was like, what are these visuals going to be? It was mind blowing. When I see, I've seen like photos of it and like quick videos of everything. The production level of this tour is sick. Unbelievable. I know why the tickets were the price point yeah. that they were. Yes. This makes sense. Yes. This is like justified now. Yeah. But then to double down and triple down triple on Triple down. And then you're triple you're, down. You're going digging your own grave at this point. Mm-hmm. And then people are gonna keep blowing up your spot and you're mad about it then yes. because other people are not agreeing with your sentiment that this was a waste of money essentially and exactly that you all deserved more but like you said too if you're a legitimate real beyonce fan yeah. you're gonna appreciate every body of work she's ever done and when she opens up with this it means something to you exactly Where this, if you've only been a fan since lemonade you're not gonna enjoy it all because you don't really understand the depth of her music and you're yes. not there to appreciate it back when it was out and that woman's mic is on um, like every ounce is live. The vocals, the runs, the power, the breath control, the shape she is in. Like I said, you did not hear her take one breath of I need to catch my breath for three hours. I get it if you do not identify with her music. If her music is not for you, that's fine. But it is non-negotiable that she is not overrated. You may not identify with her, but she is not overrated. She is one of the most talented people, not even in the last century, since the dawn of time. It was one of the most unbelievable concerts. And to see this concert that so much of queer culture was on display was insane. There was a whole like 10 minute break. Pure Honey was like extended of just her dancers on the runway doing like old school ballroom uh, voguing. And, <gasps> and it it was, it was, uh, I was speechless. It was, I'm not kidding. It was the best concert I've ever seen. Oh my God, I'm jealous. It was to die for. Yeah, so if you can see Beyonce, my God, go. It was, it was unreal. I'm so into voguing right now. I'm so into voguing right now. That brings us to... Jonah Hill. What a switching topic. I know. This is horrible. So if you haven't seen, who do you want to explain it for the people? So basically, Jonah Hill's Jonah Hill's ex girlfriend. I don't know. She released her text. She did. She did. Okay. So she released her text. I'm gonna pause you right there. Do we know why? What brought her to this point of? Releasing the text messages I that do he not. sent. I don't know. I'm what unclear caused. of why she did it, but the scary realization that I thought it was like edited text. Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was a joke. Oh, because of what it said. Because I know. of what his text said to yes. her, I was like, "This is wild, insane." So his ex girlfriend. I'm assuming they're 
no longer together. She basically released her texts between her and Jonah Hill to expose that Jonah Hill is controlling in a relationship. And the crazy thing why this really is like a hot topic, if you will, is because I feel like Wendy Williams. I feel like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He died. Aww. Anyway. That was the most iconic thing Aww. ever. When she said, Aww. he died? He died. Oh, oh. Well, anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that and death to oh, all of them. Wait, shame on you, Mrs. Spears. And shame on you, Mr. Spears. Spears. You had me fooled. fooled. Death to, to all, all of them. them. I Iconic. <laughs> R.I.P. in the Wendy Williams era because that, yeah. She, next level. Amazing. So the reason this is like, it'd be one thing, as usual, if something like this could come out in the world and us as a collective society could have the same reaction, but yeah. this is America where people don't, people are living on different planets. So, so many people were defending his behavior, saying that he was just setting boundaries. So let me give you an example. So this was one of the screenshots from Jonah Hill texting his girlfriend going, plain and simple, semicolon, if you need, semicolon, surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful... This is the end of the list. He goes, I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it. And there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for romantic partnerships. My boundaries with you based on ways these actions have hurt our trust. I mean, so many other things. Telling her to remove photos from Instagram. I don't like that you posted that, who you're hanging out with, yada, yada, yada. But yet you don't support it. You're saying, I support this, but not in a romantic relationship way, but you're setting boundaries. So basically, can't do this, can't do that, don't have these relationships relationships with these people. So basically be friends with me and my friends, do what I want to do. Do what I say. Do what I say, not as I do, because exactly. I'm sure he's doing these things. Completely. I'm sure he's going out, doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. You took the words out of my mouth. There was another screenshot where when they were maybe on and off again, when he was maybe texting her or like sexting her, or flirting with her, she found out that he was also like dating this girl and she... She said to him something along the lines of like, I would appreciate if you like told this girl that you're dating that you were so recently flirting with me and he had a problem with that. And here you are telling her what she can wear, what she can and cannot post, who she can and cannot hang out with. It's insane to me that people have the audacity to use the word boundaries because there's a very big difference between, and we were just talking about this in relationships. There's a very big difference between boundaries and control. Boundaries is something you set for yourself. Things you will not do. Things you will not do with your body. Things will you will not drink. You will not go here. You will not do this. Boundaries are personal. Boundaries are not telling someone else what they can and cannot do. That's control and emotional abuse. It's so shocking to me, and it speaks volumes how much of like a patriarchal world we live in, that if screenshots of a woman sending these kinds of texts to a man went viral, unanimously she would be called a crazy bitch. Unanimously, people would not have batted an eyelash. But because a man is doing these tweets, what, he doesn't want his girlfriend to be a slut. That's everyone's reaction. And posting her body on social media. But I mean, she, if a exactly. guy is half naked in his underwear on Instagram, yeah. he's just being handsome and uh, he's like a lady killer. But yeah. if a woman does it, she's a whore. Which, mind you, she's a surfer. Her job that her she job. gets paid to do. And it's probably. fine that he, he, he shows his dick in Wolf of Wall Street. Because that's yes. his job. But what about her job? She's a surfer. So there's going to be Correct. photos of her in a bathing suit. This is the hypocrisy. It's so insane to me. And we were basically saying, like, when you're in a relationship with somebody, every relationship you have with friends, et cetera, as a person, one of the worst things you can do is think that you can prevent conflict. There's always going to be issues. There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be disagreements. It's about how you handle that conflict. That should be the primary focus. People that spend their lives trying to prevent conflict, you're trying to move a mountain. It's not going to happen. 100%. So being that controlling beforehand is not a healthy thing to do. And when you're in a relationship, it has nothing to do with conflict arising. And even me with my husband, when we first started dating, there was things 
I didn't, and we were talking about it. There was things in both of our relationships that our partner was doing or does that weren't our favorite thing in the world. If it's a boundary for us to not be with someone like that, it's not our place to tell them they need to change that behavior. It's our responsibility to not be in that relationship. 100%. It should have been like, you know what? I don't think we're going to gel if it's non-negotiable and walk. But you and I have the foresight maturity and we're not misogynistic pieces of shit. We say to them, listen, this behavior, whatever it may be, I, it's not my favorite thing in the world. Don't let it spill over into my life where it causes issues for me. I am fine with you doing it as long as you're safe, as long as whatever the case is, that's a boundary for you. And it's up to them to get control of their own life. Let's say if it is out of control or whatever the case may be. It honestly, the fact that people have the audacity to call things like that boundaries, it just like makes me scared yeah. for humanity. And even and this goes for anybody, anybody in any relationships, thinking that you can change somebody and change behavior, like you're saying too, we need to step away from that. I can fix him, I can fix her, I can fix them, whatever the case might be. No, you can't. Yes. There is no chance in any relationship you can fix someone, if they don't want to change, you will never change no. them. They have to want to be different and change their state of mind to be in a in a different place in their life. If they are still in that point of their life and you are not okay with it, it is time for you to go. Yes. It is time for you to move on. If you feel like you are mentally on a different page and you can no longer support that mental state that they are in and what yeah. they're going through, move on. Close that book and say, I am, I am not in this place in my life. I need to step away. I know. Revisit it if you need be, but if you're in a place where you feel like you are mentally being abused or physically, or you feel like this is just not, like you said, if you're not gelling with that person, this just might not be the relationship for you or this, or friendships. Yes. Do not keep friends around and think that you can mold them into like your perfect friend or your yes. perfect partner. It will not work 100% of the time. It will fail. Because what's that called? Drum roll. Trying to control the situation, control the person, control the outcome. Yes. It's not going to happen. And right. it's so funny, believe it or not, I've lived many lives and I was a waiter for like over 10 years of my life. I was horrible. I hated it. Look at Vanderpump Rules. There is something about restaurant people. It is just the most insane sociological study and the, the people you meet. It was always fascinating to me. So many people I've met in my life that talked about who they were dating or their partner in a way where they like tried to control their partner from like going out or doing something because they thought their partner was going to cheat on them. And I'll never forget one of the funniest things a girl said to me one time when I was working at Olive Garden. Her <laughs> boyfriend was like hanging out with his guy friends at Applebee's or whatever. And I'm like putting something in the computer and she's standing on the other side of the computer and she was bugging out that he was there with his friends. Bugging out. And I'm like, what's the matter? I'm like, what are you like? What's the problem? And she's like, yeah, he's probably at Applebee's right now fucking some girl in the bathroom. And she was bugging out like trying to get him to like either let her go or whatever the case was. So that's the example of the behavior I'm talking about. There's like three points to this. A, if I thought Casey was going to cheat on me, not one ounce of me would prevent that from happening because I want him to. I want to find out that you want to do that so I know it's time for me to leave. You clocking into a part-time job, which is preventing your partner from being unfaithful, you view that as just as loving as if that wasn't a factor in your relationship. I don't want that kind of love that I know you're only being faithful to me because I'm chaining you to the bed. Right. I'm not Joey Greco, bitch. <laughs> yes. I'm not fucking Joey Greco on cheaters coming to find out. And yes. like, I'm not trying to I do want you to PI cheat. work. Yes. Like, I'm not trying to find you no. cheating in a park playing fucking chess or whatever yes. people do when they cheat. Yes. That's like dating someone you think is a serial killer. And waiting and, for them and like you're like and, around the but, bush like with binoculars yeah, trying like to dating, watch them kill somebody. It's like dating someone you think is a serial killer and you're fine with knowing they're only not killing people because you're stopping them from doing it rather than <laughs> letting them be a murderer and running for the hills. Yeah. It's the yeah. same thing. I don't get a, that. B, I wouldn't even be in a relationship that I had the insecurity that I thought he was going to. Yes. And see if you're the person that has heightened suspicion when your partner isn't doing anything to warrant that suspicion, you need to look inward. Yeah. Because I've also been friends with people like that in my life, that they're overly paranoid. I know the other person. I know their, their oh, partner. Yeah. And they weren't doing anything to warrant that behavior. I'm going to say something controversial, too, right now. And yet a little brave. Thank God Dan and I agree on this. He was like, oh, you can, like, 
go through my phone whenever I don't have any issues. And I said, yeah. I don't need to. I said, the second I need to go through your phone is I no longer trust you and I no longer, and he said it too. He's like, the second one of us goes through each other's phone without each other knowing about it, Preach. he goes, the relationship is over. Yes. He's like, if you or I vice versa, go through each other's phone. Yeah. The second you do that with, with the intent of trying to find something, the relationship is done without a doubt. You no longer trust that person enough where if I say to him, I'm like, are you cheating on me? No. And I don't believe you. Yes. And I'm like, nah, but you are. And you're, you're calculating. You no longer trust that person, nor do you deserve to be in a relationship that probably is healthy. If you got past that, he's like, Oh, I shouldn't look if I'm like, if I was like texting you and he's yeah. like looking and he's like, Oh, I shouldn't do that. And I'm like, well, I don't give a shit. Cause I have nothing to hide. Exactly. And neither do you, but he's like, but that's an invasion of your privacy. And the second I stop, like uh, if I'm looking, I I'm like, what am I doing? Exactly. I know people that do this know. regularly I and know. go through their uh, significant other social media and have their passwords to everything oh, and check Jesus. in and check in on it. No, that's that wild. to me is the beginning of the end of that relationship. Because if you're going through emails, Instagram, Twitter, DMs, everything, maybe I don't trust this person and maybe it's time to close the book. That goes back to the point of boundaries versus control. If right. my boundary is not being with someone that I need to be insecure about this behavior. And if you something you do justifies me being insecure about that, goodbye. That's what I'm saying. I've never understood this behavior that if you give me a reason to be insecure, me then locking you in a cage feels just as loving in our relationship as if that wasn't the case. You should never be with someone that makes you feel that way. And if you do, you're not going to change that behavior. So that's why this to me, it's just insane that like something so evident can come out about a person like Jonah Hill, something so public and people actually, it doesn't surprise me because the people that are okay with the kind of behavior we're talking about, they're the ones saying he was just setting his boundaries. Putting him on a pedestal and good for her yeah. for setting her boundary of like, I yeah. will not tolerate this. Yes, For yes, anybody yes. past, present, future to come into her life or has been there and be like, if you even try and come back in my life I know. or anybody from this point forward, if you try this shit, this isn't going to fly. I and know. good for her for being like, yeah. this is not healthy. This is not okay. I know. You're absolutely not doing this to me. I know. Good for her. I'm somebody too. Like when you see the videos on TikTok of like when someone comments something disgusting, like disgustingly racist or disgustingly homophobic, whatever. And someone basically, oh, does your job know you feel this way? X, Y, Z. I love that. Me and too. I'm sorry, I will die on this hill. Social media is not private. You know why I say that? Because if you walked in the middle of Target and screamed what you just typed, there would be consequences. There would be consequences if you did that in the middle of your job. Yeah. You do not get anonymity behind your little keyboard. Let the If you want the world, which anything you comment on social media, that's the world, bitch. When you put that out there, because you don't think anyone's going to see it, your job's not going to see it, your mom's not going to see it, you put it on a so pub public platform. How many times do we see it, though, where I've always heard about it, too, where Facebook, at, especially at first when that was so popular, that how many times people were losing their jobs mm -hmm. over over something that they shared, not even their own yes. posts or their own opinions, yep. but information that was shared or they had commented something that they yes. deemed to be harmless yes. or an opinion got them fired. I know. Your career I is know. over. It's the same thing as the, the guy who posted the Beyonce critique. Oh. You can post whatever you want. I don't care. But when it comes from a place of not educating yourself on the topic you're talking about, not considering what that topic, the effect that topic has on other people, yeah. other the situation in a public space, get ready for the backlash, bitch. Well, and be prepared. Yeah, because anything that you put out in social media, like anything that no matter what platform you're on, something good or bad, if it's an opinion or if it's a comedy video, I know. you have to have the wherewithal to know if I'm putting something out there that is my opinion, yes. someone is not going to agree with it. I know. And that if it doesn't get received the way I want it to be received, I have to be okay with that. Yes. But when you're putting out a comedy video and somebody says something homophobic to exactly. you, that is not warranted. That's what I mean. The, the lack of accountability on social media is crazy. And it's like the Wild West. And it, it sucks because it's like, I feel like the only things that have manifested in the realm of accountability on social media is either no accountability at all or 
overcorrection where it's like overly PC and overly crazy and people are losing their jobs for something. The apology in the notes That's app. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's just like, like it, yes, 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 yes. It's just that it's just yeah. such an unregulated area and it, it's crazy. But like I said, I just don't understand how in 2023 you don't consider what you're putting out there into the world or like how your behavior is. Just recently, I saw another video of like some girl, I don't even know what her name is. She's like a, a Disney content creator is basically getting dragged online because she was live at Disney, what she thought was joking around, started reciting. Remember that old, old video? I don't even know who the original comic was. The comic made that skit about the nail tech. <gasps> yes. Doing a very stereotypical Asian voice, doing the thing. This white girl Disney creator on her live, I guess, remembered that thing and just starts doing it in the voice on t- It's 2023. Do you think doing an Asian accent on your Instagram live... What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. There's like, girl, we what are. Was, and also too, what was the context? Because I haven't seen the video. You're at Disney doing an Instagram live. Like I said, my comedy videos, they're not even live. I get to, I get to edit them and I'm putting them through a vigorous screening where I'm saying, is this context warranted where this is going to land? Or is this, 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 this. I put so much consideration into what I put out there before I put it out there that people up record a video look at it back and go that's fine this is great megan trainer let, let me put captions on it you know what yeah. i mean let, let me like and then post it you had yeah. nine opportunities to go hmm is this the thing in 2023 megan trainer's podcast exactly and then now but i mean it was a live video so yes, yes she couldn't yes. she couldn't go back and edit the video but girl you girl, don't feel like that's a little that wasn't even something that could have been like a megan trainer that it was an opinion this was you mocking doing a stereotypical asian voice and punching down minorities it's 2023. And what was, what was the reason? Yeah, I didn't know Cardi B, yeah. what was the reason? What was the reason? Yeah, yeah literally. Out of nowhere. Just yeah. popped in her head and she thought she'd do the voice. What are you doing? That's what I mean. It's just the Wild West out there, man. So I'm just, tired. I'm tired and I think we need to cheer ourselves up with some purchaser pass. All right, let's do it. We'll be right back. All righty, we are back with a purchase or pass. Yes. We got some good ones this week. I, I'm i like gooning for these. I know. I, am like, I feel like our past couple purchases are past. We've just been like, pass, pass. <laughs> well, I mean, well, but blame ooh, the industry. Oh, don't, don't, I know. Um, I mean, but also, too, the brands that we have in this from mm-hmm. uh, the lineup. I mean, go back to our podcast episode of the top five like beauty brands and all of that. Go back yes. to that podcast. Let's just jump right in. Yes. To start things out, we have the Trixie Cosmetics Bronzer Sticks and the Trixie Cosmetics Liquid Eyeshadows, which we did a purchaser pass a couple episodes ago, but she came out with three new shades. So there's six total now. Let me say this. This episode is coming out Sunday on YouTube, Monday on streaming. This launched two days ago or three days ago, the previous Friday. So I apologize if everything sold out in five seconds. I hope not. But right before we filmed this, Mama got a PR package of these. When I got here today, you you picked carried it, it up, up. Yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I thought you bought something." And yeah. I was like, "Oh no, this is yeah." What was that accent? Yeah. What did what I bought missed. something? Oh, I know. It does. I don't even think twice about it. I just heard it and I wanted to throw up. But I thought you had. I thought you bought something. Yeah, I thought you and, bought it. And then you opened it up, and just seeing them in person, the video a does not do these products justice. At- all. So let me tell you, I'm wearing the bronzing stick, uh, the third darkest shade. Uh, I am wearing Sunset Tina, which the, I will say the first You're wearing two. You're the third darkest? I know. I'm wearing the third darkest, the, the, which I kind of love because I, the, the, I always think bronzing sticks are never light enough for pale people, especially who want that bronze. Yes, not the, these, the lightest, girl. the sun kissed on this is like if you are porcelain, this will genuinely give you a bronze without being too orangey because it's yes. so fair. And then look at that darkest shade. I mean, leave it to Trixie Mattel and Trixie Cosmetics Unbelievable. to come out with bronzer shades. Six, mind yes. you, six shades where other brands are doing eight to ten shades and I can't know. get it right. I love the packaging. The heart twist up. It's the same as her cream blushes, which are amazing. Beautiful. They're $16 each, which is awesome. That's, I love, under 20 sold. And what floored me when I use these is I, so many bronzing sticks or even cream products we were talking about are just like creamy, 
goopy doopy, like slip and slide, yes. too glowy, melt off. This has the same formula as a product I love. It's the Hindash liquid bronzer, where if I put this yes, on, what's that. left on my hand, this shit dries down to the point that I need to like use a scrubby to get it off my hand. You wore it, just it at your wedding. Locks, I wore it on my wedding because I know it's not going to go anywhere yes. in the heat, whatever. These do the same thing. I love it. So for my oily oh. skin combination girlies that want a cream bronzer, this does not, it literally does not budge. It blended like a dream on my skin. Bronzing sticks, to me, absolute purchase. These were awesome. Oh my God. I want to buy all six of them. Oh, I love. want all six of these to do like makeup, like wedding makeup. Absolutely love. Yes. And so then part two of yes. this, there's another part of this launch. It's the three... Uh, Shade extensions, I'm going to call it, of the um, Stay the Night toppers. So with the Summer Flame Skinny Dip and Take a Hike. So, I mean, my God. So I was nervous because the first three shades were very ethereal. So it made sense mm-hmm. that they were toppery, like they weren't opaque, even though they were stunning. I posted a short about it. Uh, but these shades, when I opened the, saw them in person, how dark the blue was and dark that uh kind of purpley reddish it's like a burgundy with like green and blue shift that summer flame and then even the uh take a hike take a hike (gasps) is very deep green i got nervous because i was like oh these are shades i like to be a little bit more opaque mama kevin and i swatched them opacity that blue A shade name, Opacity. Opacity. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it. But (laughs) opaque. I mean, this is, I would believe if you told me the pictures that they swatched, (gasps) I would believe that there's no shadow underneath. And I thought there was. Agreed. These are outstanding. Outstanding. I love these. I would purchase both of these. And what's cool too, I love that they do this. They have a bundle for 40 or separately $18. Get that bundle. I know. The bundles, I like Trixie warns people, they sell out in seconds. If you know about this launch, yay. I'm so sorry. This is coming out after the launch. I know this is coming out after the launch. So So stock the website. There is also such a cute shirt. Remember me missing out on the pillow, the last launch? Oh, the I was pillow, so sad. The you pillow. better believe, but I want the t-shirt. It was the so cute, is like adorable. camper, yeah. And that's a great bundle price. Because what are you saving? You're saving $13 with the bundle, if the bundle's still in stock. But I'm telling you, any of these were absolutely great. Again, yes. purchase. Yes. All righty. So up next, we have three Sephora favorite sets. The first one is the... Gleamy is, Dreamy. Gleamy Dreamy, which this seems like it has a lawless blush, a milk contour stick, a Patrick Ta gloss, rare beauty primer, Summer Fridays mask, Anastasia soap brow, something from Glow Recipe, and an Ilia mascara. You get four full sizes in this one for $49. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, full size blush, two full size lip products, and the milk is technically full size now. Uh, yeah, eh. I will say. So then the other one is the Lux Vibes, okay. and then the third is Give Me Some Shine. So I will say I like the Sephora favorite sets, especially around holiday, like the perfume one that was yeah. always such a great oh, gift. That's a great deal. Brilliant too. way to find a new fragrance to get all the minis of everything, yeah. and there's enough in it that you can like use it. But uh. Yeah, so I will say out of any of the three of these, like looking at the Give Me Some Shine, it's just like lipsticks and lip glosses. I don't like it. I don't like that. That's a pass for me. It's a pass. And also, too, it's kind of annoying that like the shades are predetermined. So it's like... Exactly. I mean, the value of it, though, because you're getting a full-size... Uh, Charlotte Tilbury lip, which is $38, which it shouldn't be. Do you need a Charlotte Tilbury lip? You know what right. I mean? Like, and it's I probably wouldn't... like the shade, like Walk of No Shame or whatever. <laughs> totally. Which yes. it used to be called Walk of Shame and she had changed it because it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my God. I mean, like, come on. It's just tired and played out. Yeah. The Lux one, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Like the mini La Mer, like moisturizer. First of all, I think a lot of this stuff is overhyped. Like I don't. They just put that mini La Mer in there so they could charge what they charged. Like forty nine dollars, and you know it's probably this big, the La Mer. So yeah, a raindrop, and then that's. I, but again, with this one, in, if you don't like those lipstick shades, and you're not that hourglass translucent powder color, it ain't gonna work. Also, make this worth the value. Put a full size product in there for forty nine dollars. At least the mascara. You can't put a full size mascara yes. in there for people. 
for the Lux vibes. Lux vibes. Let's give you all minis that cost yeah. us nothing. No, absolutely not. I cannot. That's such Which a another pass. side note, people. Little Sephora tea. Never buy a thing in the checkout line. Every single thing in that checkout line. Do the math. Nine times out of ten, it's almost uh, exactly half the amount, like the size. So if it's 50 ounces, it's going to be 25 ounces. But the price is not half. No. It's always like 70% of the price. It's a scam and a sham. It's the a scam, only girl. Thing, buy the full size and return it. I did like the it. math on the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. It was mm-hmm. actually a better buy to get the minis. Oh, getting okay. three of those instead of the full size. But even Which that, is, okay, so let me the revise magic and cream, say do the math. I know no, but you don't need the, the magic ma- cream. No, but even everything on that, the minis and more, whatever, all that I mini know. shit. Stop getting the mini mascaras for fifteen dollars. I know, I know. And people spend hundreds of dollars on the minis. I know. Stop. When people are like, "Oh, I'm traveling, whatever." Put Girl. that, put that fucking setting spray <laughs> yeah, in a yeah. travel bottle and stop wasting. Go on your Amazon, coin. buy yourself some travel tubes and squirt, squirt, <laughs> squirt, squirt, fill, fill. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The, the new Mac lip balm. Squirt. Stop. Oh I my can't. god. That and then disgusting. honestly, so that's a pass. The, uh, okay, so the first two have been a pass for me. I do and not. And then I will say the only one that could be a purchase for me is the, gl- what is it? It's the Gleamy Dreamy. Gleamy I agree. Dreamy. To, to me, personally, yes. this is a purchase. The only product I products I don't like in here are the Anastasia Brow Freeze and the Ilia Mascara. The Ilia Mascara for me flakes a little bit and the Brow Freeze does not stay where I feel like other products, like when I want like a cool yeah. soap brow, stays this, my brows fall within oh, minutes. Okay. Everything else. So then you know what though? Love. Because even the milk, but again, if you're not that shade in the milk, it's not going to work. Yeah, what? It's gleamy, it's dreamy, definitely so dark. it's got to be like a highlighter. The lawless thing is pretty universal, but then what? You're paying for like a mini a mini Rare Beauty primer. So honestly, like that's what I mean. The Elf the Elf uh, Dual Linded Mascara and Brow uh, Freeze is the best thing I've ever used for $2.99. Oh, so yeah. Oh, to be that's a, true. Okay, so you know what? Pass on this too. I would, if I, because I love the blush, I love the other products, I would purchase this. If you're going to buy the Summer Fridays lip yeah. balm, people are going crazy over that. If you're getting the blush, the lip balm, or even like the two products, you might as well pick this set up and try the other stuff for free then because That's you're going to spend point. more money. Yes, yes, yes. So That's I would purchase point. this. If you're going to buy the Summer Fridays. A full size of something in this Of kit. something in there. Just yeah. get the other stuff because then you're paying pennies for the rest. Yeah, so a purchase with the condition. Yeah. Yes. If okay. you're inclined to buy the rest totally all right so next up we have the give beauty right give is that what beauty, it's called yep. Gwen Stefani the feeling cheeky amplifying blush duos so mm-hmm. we have six shades here so you were with me when I got the bronzing the bronzer the contouring bronze yeah. yeah so they the formula it, one was cream one was powder the formula was actually incredible mm-hmm. of both but the colors were wrong the lightest shades it was like the cult they messed up with the the light to dark and what was in what they yes. messed up there these are both powder one is a radiant and one is a matte oh i thought one nope. was cream. i know i know okay i mean yeah. i'm not in love with that i thought about it because i thought the same thing at first but then i said to myself i'm like i don't know to be honest with you because it almost reminds me of the yuma beauty where one side is uh radiant and one mm-hmm. side is matte like Cause not everybody like the Patrick Ta, not everybody is going to want a cream and a powder. And I think what's saving it for me with these is the price $28. So think about two blushes for $28 is not bad at all. And I don't hate the shade range. I love, first I love off, the I colors. love the shade range. My only thing with it is that the shimmer part of it now, just thinking that, because I thought the shimmer was actually a cream. Mm-hmm. Um, my only thing is, get, let me see that formula. Mm-hmm. Let me feel that texture. Let exactly. me see the texture of that on the skin if I wanted to mix both or use them separately. Yeah. I love that you can kind of make it How as shimmery. How shimmery are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it as shimmery as you want and put the matte one over if it's a little too much. Yeah. But what's that texture? What's that texture like? Yeah. But I love the shades are really cool. Like, and I love the, we have like a lavender. I love the deeper berry, the more neutral, the peachy colors, the peachy pink, and then the bright pink. You really have a wide breadth of shades, which I think can work for so many skin tones like the arm swatches. Um, Really cool. Based on the powder formula in the bronzing Mm -hmm. contour, whatever duos. 
it was really nice. Yeah. So that being said, this to me, I would recommend obviously maybe just, you know, go and feel it and see the color in yeah. person. Cause again, we haven't felt it. They haven't sent this to me. So I don't know what the formula of the shimmer and everything is or how shimmery I should say. So feel it, but first impressions purchase purchase. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would purchase these Especially for, sure. for $28. $28 is great for two blushes. Two blushes. Yeah. yeah. You want to take the lead on this? Okay, so we have Tarte Key Largo Glow Bronzing Drops. Pass, girl. They're bronzing drops. And yes, Are they came... Are we joking? They came out with three shades. Go get the... Go get... The Drunk Elephant. Drunk Elephant, exactly. If you want like a higher end one. But also you could use whatever for this. You could use the, the Elf Halo Glow. You could use the L'Oreal uh, this the, just, or the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector. This really... $35. Get out. I mean, listen, and the, like the Drunk Elephant one I think is 38 yeah. But here's my thing with the Drunk Elephant one that I know it has skincare packed in it. Like antioxidants, all that stuff. Yes. And also too, it was their original mm-hmm. idea. Why once again Tarte rip somebody else off? And it's you know, of course other brands rip Tarte off. Yes. I get it a hundred percent. Come up with your own idea. Yeah. Because yeah. you're trying to jump on the bronzing drop bandwagon. Because look at what they did with the contour sticks. The or the contour ones if I copying see one Charlotte more Tilbury. Wand, I'm gonna lose my they mind. They copied Charlotte Tilbury. Now you're copying drunk elephant because you're to me this is like what is that called when you're in a hospital your pulse honey you're dying you're flatlining yeah you thank you you're flatlining at this point because you're you're grasping at straws you're going after someone else's key product and again like, i'm surprised this wasn't called glow shape tape like <laughs> just the same shit over and over again for 35 dollars, girl you do not need this get like, the hell out of here it's pass. crazy pass absolutely i would recommend drugstore option do the maybelline four in one perfector or the elf halo glow those are drugstore and high end do the drunk elephant give them their credit because they did it first like bye oh god okay kevin's gonna slide off his seat oh, we god. have a new what is this formula called this is from fenty beauty new lip color this is the icon velvet girl And my God, let me tell you something. When I saw this come up on my Instagram, I nearly passed out. Yes. There was a snail trail behind me. I knew you were. The minute I took a screenshot of this, I knew you were going to die. I was down the street sliding when I saw this color. This was the formula I was wearing in the podcast where I was dressed as Barbara. Yes. Yes. In the color HBIC. HBIC. So that was that formula. It's like a very velvet whip. Does not dry down. It actually blurs the lips. It's a beautiful formula. This Look at this color. I mean, this is... The color of my soul. I know. I I love this shade. I am like obsessed with this. This is so beautiful. Love the formula, first of all. Um, I will say pinks are a little bit tricky because sometimes you see a picture online and then when you get it in, it's like a little too red or it's not. It's not quite. It's a little more dull or it's a little more too hot something too hot pink which i know that's not a thing for you but hmm. yeah yeah uh i this is gorgeous yes and for 29 dollars, i will say this when i'm judging no. an expensive lip product though i always say to myself okay if i'm paying 20 29 for a lip product there better not be one con to the formula which this one there isn't there is no and con. there needs to be something special about the color or the possibility which again that there is with this because you uh, you could find a dupe to this color but you will not find a dupe to this color and formula so Correct. that right there to me that's why this would be a purchase 100 percent purchase i yeah. love this and i would love to see more shades in this formula yes. too give me a light cool tone new to pop in the middle and i'm my heart is set yeah yeah Just purchase last but not least we have from color pop the new instant crush cream blushes we have eight shades i think i was more excited about this than you yep really look at that look at what they're so pretty i and for the price what are these 12 dollars each fine i'll give you that but like girl crickets it is pale they are pale they are boring yeah yeah that angel energy is not going to show up on anybody energy energy cherry blossom yeah whole mood Girl, cherry, bl- shut cherry up. blossom is pretty, but then yeah, there's a very, I don't know. There's like no medium shades. Girl, it's like right? it's like three red shades, and then the rest three are like dark dull, and five like super boring. Pale. I mean, like it's pretty 
if I didn't have cream blush. Yes. You know what I will say too, even from these swatches, they look a little, um, which it says natural matte finish. They're wet. That is wet and translucent. It doesn't look like there's much coverage and it looks like, I feel like I'd be putting face gloss on, right? That's the vibe the swatches yes. are giving me. And I just don't, yeah. when I saw the, um, uh, the review, somebody, I think it was maybe dupe that on Instagram was like swatching these. I was like, and I was like, yeah. where, <laughs> and I, when she put all eight colors up, I was like, okay, where are like the deeper shades or like the, the brighter yeah. shades or something like a little bit different. When I saw all of these like lined up next to each other, I was like, this is so boring. I was okay. like, I'm done with these. Like, I mean, good for you, ColourPop, because you're about to make hella money on yeah. these, but it is such a pass for me. I do not get this. Like, it is so boring and I'm over it. Okay. You know what? Yeah. I got excited by the color, but now after our deep dive, I'm going to pass. Yeah. You keep me grounded. I try, girl. I know. So, Preach. yeah. Preach. Why can't I remember the <laughs> My best Golden friend. Girls theme song? Oh, thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. I was almost singing the uh the Gilmore Bob's, Girls. Oh, I was like Bob's Burgers. No, yeah, I kept thinking of Gilmore Girls. Yeah. The if you're out on your own. No, uh Golden Girls is what I thought. Yeah. yeah. No, you keep me grounded because you talk me off the ledge. I just got excited by the color. No, I I get it. You're and right, you're right. It's like this is like baby's first blush. Like if, like, I don't know. Shut like, I feel like because I, up. I feel like I've had so many cream blushes. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Baby's first blush. You. Yeah. Like, ew. I'm sorry. This is like kids makeup to me. I agree. Well, all right. Pass. All right. Pass on the Claire's makeup. I mean, color pop. Yeah. Bye. Alrighty, guys, that is it for a brand new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. This was fun. I was happy with those purchaser passes. Oh my God. This was, I think that was the most purchases, purchases we've in ever one had episode. Yeah, in someone one do the math. Uh, yeah. Horrible. There's going to be a compilation of us going pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if there's an Uber <laughs> fan out there, do the math and see that might have been the most positive purchaser pass out of anything. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching a brand new episode. There will be a brand new episode next week. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube for your video episode one day early on Sundays. It streams everywhere on Mondays on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, which make sure to subscribe on those platforms. Leave us a little five star review if you can. And remember, you, nope, that was wrong. Wherever you are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, you are beautiful. Bye, guys. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>